What was the ancient human hookup scene like? Scientists are trying to answer this question with the power of genome sequencing. As it turns out, our ancestors were getting it on with people who weren't technically humans. If you go back far enough, humans have Neanderthal and Denisovian cousins. How much of our DNA comes from these prehistorical affairs? Today, thanks to the power of technology, you can pretty much have sex with whoever you want as long as you can find a willing partner. But in some ways, the modern dating world has nothing on our ancient past. Primitive man, it turns out, had kind of a crazy sex life, but not exactly in the way you might expect. What exactly was going on in the bedrooms of our caveman ancestors? Thanks to new genetic analysis algorithms that scientists created to look into ancient sex, we know more about what they were up to. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, there were basically four species of ancient hominids that were all doing it with each other. This hookup scene, it turns out, lives on inside of our DNA. There were Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo sapiens, aka humans, and a mystery ancestor. You've probably heard Neanderthal used as an insult, and it used to be thought that Neanderthals had nothing to do with us. They were just a now extinct subspecies of ancient humans who lived in Eurasia about 40,000 years ago. Nobody knows exactly where they went. It's a highly debated subject. Some argue that they were wiped out by disease, and others say that there were simply too few of them for the population to last. The Denisovans, also known as Denisova hominins, are a more mysterious case. They certainly aren't as famous as Neanderthals. They lived across Asia during the Lower and Middle Paleolithic. We only know about them at all thanks to a few physical remains. Most of what we know about the Denisovans comes from DNA evidence. So little is known about them that they've never even gotten a formal species name. The very first identification of a Denisovan individual was in 2010 and was based on mitochondrial DNA. Scientists extracted it from a juvenile female finger bone that was excavated from the Siberian Denisova cave in the Altai Mountains two years prior. This DNA indicated close affinity with Neanderthals. The very same cave was also occasionally lived in by Neanderthals, but nobody really knows whether or not Neanderthals and Denisovans ever actually lived in the cave at the same time. One could have moved in after the other moved out. A few other Denisovan remains were found there, and another important puzzle piece was discovered at the Baishirya Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau in China. DNA evidence seems to suggest that the Denisovans had dark skin, eyes, and hair. They had a physical build and facial features that were similar to Neanderthals. However, they had big molars, which is something more reminiscent of middle to late Pleistocene archaic humans. An analysis of four modern human genomes revealed evidence that Neanderthals and Denisovans mated with humans, sharing beds and genes in the process. This team of researchers found that 3% of the Neanderthal genome came from interbreeding with ancient humans, our ancestors. They think that this intermixing happened between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago, which is way earlier than previous estimates. Their affair with another subspecies goes way back. They also found something even more surprising. 1% of the Denisovan genome contained genetic material that came from a mysterious source. It's from an archaic human ancestor that wasn't human, Neanderthal, or Denisovan. The scientists wrote that 15% of genetic regions that originated from this mystery ancestor have been passed on to humans today us. There are a few theories as to who this anonymous ancient sex partner is and how this got baked into our genetic code. So just who is this archaic human ancestor that we all share? It might be Homo erectus. Don't laugh at this name, it means upright man and this is science talking here. Homo erectus was probably one of the first human ancestors to move out of Africa. They spread out to areas like modern day China and Indonesia. Physically, they looked a lot like us, only they had longer legs and shorter arms. They were the first ones to have more flat faces and prominent noses, like we do. They also didn't have much body hair. Their brains were large, although their mental capacities varied depending on the population. In early Homo erectus populations, brain development seems to have ceased early in childhood, which would suggest that their kids were mostly self-sufficient early in life. This is totally different from human toddlers, who are pretty much useless in terms of getting tasks accomplished. Out of all of our ancestors, they were the most durable. They lasted all the way up until 117,000 years ago. At least, that's what one fossil found in Java suggests. A paper that was published in 2013 in Nature got the ball rolling on this mystery ancestor investigation. It was reporting on a complete genome of a Neanderthal from the Altai Mountains in Mongolia. In the paper, they wrote that there was evidence of archaic DNA in that Neanderthal genome. They suggested possible Neanderthal Denisovan sexy time, but they also said that it could have been Homo erectus as well. Neanderthals were clearly a pretty promiscuous species, which makes things more difficult for researchers than if they had just stuck to doing it with other Neanderthals. They had too much fun, and now we're left with serious detective work to do if we're going to figure out where all of our DNA comes from. 
The genetic analysis shown in this new paper suggests that this ancient mystery ancestor split off from the lineage that would go on to become modern-day humans about a million years ago. That seems to point a finger in the direction of Homo erectus. However, there is one major thing standing in the way of officially naming Homo erectus as the mystery lover. There is no genome sequence for Homo erectus. That particular ancient hominid only has so much DNA that we can look at. Currently, whole genome sequencing has mostly just been used as a research tool for things like this. But in the last decade, it's starting to see use in clinics. It's thought that in the future, genome sequence data could be an important part of everyone's medical treatment that tells you what diseases you're most prone to. Between 1 and 3% of the human genome, at least in Europeans and East Asians, comes from Neanderthals. Some modern-day humans, notably modern-day humans who happen to live in Oceania, can trace as much as 5% of their DNA right back to the Denisovans. And how much DNA did we get from that unsequenced ancestor that may or may not be Homo erectus? That's a more difficult question. Scientists only found out that they were involved in the ancient sex scene at all by following some fairly thin genetic trails. The evidence isn't as powerful as it could be. You might have DNA from this ancestor in you right now and not even know it. A number of different species intermixing events could have helped sustain the presence of this DNA all the way up to the modern day. Currently, it seems as though the most obvious mode of entry for this mystery ancestor would have been mating with Denisovans. Denisovans are the ones who most likely hooked up with them. Scientists found that 15% of the genetic regions that came from the super archaic ancestor overlap with the ones that lasted all the way to modern day Asian and Oceanic individuals via Denisovans. It has been proposed by some that Denisovans and ancient humans were banging each other until as recently as 15,000 years ago. That's a pretty direct way for us to have ended up with the mysterious DNA. It's also possible that the mystery ancestor just hooked up directly with humans. The evidence for this, however, is slim. Whoever they were, they probably didn't have much sex with humans. Maybe they wanted to, but it just didn't work out. Or maybe they lived too far away. Relationships are complicated, but there is a small possibility that humans were mingling with them as well as with Neanderthals and Denisovans. There's better evidence for a complicated three-species love triangle between the archaic ancestor, Neanderthals, and humans. 35% of the regions that overlapped between the mystery ancestor and Neanderthals were also in the genome of one modern-day human from Africa that they looked at. This suggests that the genetic material was passed to the Neanderthals, then they passed it onward to us. Because there is currently no genome sequence for the ancient hominin, pinning down exactly how all this intermingling happened is very tricky. But scientists do know one thing for sure. There was genetic exchange whenever two of these groups overlapped in a particular place at a particular time. They had no issues mixing it up and having sex with someone who is technically a different subspecies than they were. If they were there, they were having sex. Perhaps there's a lesson in there somewhere for modern humans. And as technology makes genome sequencing more possible, who knows what else we might learn about ancient sex. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.